In this video, we're going to talk about password recovery. So how many times has that happened to you? You go to log into a router or a switch, and okay, I'm here on the console. Oh, what's the password? Is it password? Nope. Is it enable? Nope. Is it 123? Oh, dang, I forgot the password. Well, never fear. There is a way to do a password recovery on Cisco routers and switches. The catch is, is that you have to be local to the device, connected with a serial cable, in order to do this password recovery. And I don't consider that a bug, I consider it a feature. If you could do password recovery on a device remotely, what's the point of having a password? So in this video, we will actually recover the password for this 2960, which, as luck would have it, I actually forgotten the console password for it, from where we set it earlier in this course. Some of you probably remember it, and some of you could probably go back and get it, but let's do the password recovery because it works well enough for us. Now, every device's password recovery mechanism is different. On most modern switches, you have to actually power the switch off and hold in a certain button on the front of the switch while you apply power and hold it in until a certain light stops blinking. On the 2960, it's the mode button that's on the front of the switch, and you have to hold it in until the system light stops blinking. Now, no one could possibly ever remember all of the various password recovery procedures. So you can look it up on Cisco's website, and it steps you through how to do it. But since this is the CCENT course, we're going to step through it here live in our lab. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to go out, and I'm going to start the password recovery process on this 2960 switch. And we will come back in just a couple of minutes and step all the way through the password recovery process. So here we are after I have followed that process. And literally all I did was unplug the power, hold in the button, and reapply the power until the light turned solid green, which is what the password recovery instructions say to do. This is the type of screen you get once you perform the first step of this. And this is fairly consistent across all models of routers or switches. Now you'll notice that the switch actually tells us the system has been interrupted. Here's what you need to do in order to finish loading the system software. Now, on this particular switch, all you have to do is do flash init, and then you could boot the switch, but that just boots the switch with the existing configuration, which we don't know the password to. So that's not really ideal in our situation. Different models of switches have different steps. Sometimes you have a load underscore helper that you have to use before the boot. At any rate, you do all the commands up to the boot prompt. In this case, we'll do flash init, like it tells us. It initializes the flash file system and mounts it so that you can access the files on it. And so now you could actually do dir flash, and here's all the files on the flash of this particular switch. Now there is config.txt. If you were to type boot right here, it would load config.txt as the running configuration. What we want to do is rename that file to something else, and then boot the switch, and it'll boot up just like it has no config, which it doesn't because that's the file it's looking for. So we will do rename flash, and you have to specify the flash in this case. It's not like in the actual iOS where you can just put in the file name and it assumes you're on the flash. But rename flash config.txt to flash config.old. So now that that's renamed, we can actually boot the switch. Now, the only reason we're renaming this config is because we want to actually recover the passwords, change the passwords, essentially, yet keep the actual booting and running configuration on this switch. If this were a switch that you'd bought off eBay and you didn't really care about the configuration because you're just going to wipe it out and start over from scratch anyway, you could just delete config.txt and skip all the rest of this, and that just removes all of the configuration. So once this has booted up completely, we'll rejoin the video once we're in the iOS. So here we are after that. If we hit return to get started, we're in the initial system configuration dialog. It looks just like we've not configured the switch because, well, we've renamed the configuration, so it doesn't have any configuration. So we'll say no. We're now back out of the switch prompt. So we'll do enable. We're now in enable mode on the switch. So now we can actually do dir. There's our config.old. So what we need to do now is rename that config back to config.txt. So we'll rename config.old to config.txt. Destination file name is config.txt. So now we have a valid configuration. And then the next thing we do is we copy config.txt to running config. Now before we hit enter, what do you think this is going to do? 
what this will actually do is take the information that's in that configuration file and merge it into the current running configuration, which basically configures the switch exactly as it would be in production, except now you're actually enabled on the switch. So we do that. Destination file name is running config. It generates the RSA key because that's part of the configuration. And now you notice the host name has changed. We're now C2960 lab, but we're enabled at this point. We could do show run, and we can see there's the enable secret and the enable password. And if we go down here to the bottom to the line configurations, you'll see the line password. Oh, it was Cisco1. That's what the password was. So at this point, you could go in and reconfigure all of these passwords if you wanted to. In fact, let's go ahead and change the enable password because I'm pretty sure I don't remember it. So we'll do config T. We'll do enable secret. We'll do let me into it. Then we'll do enable password. Then we'll do let me into it with a capital L because they have to be different. We then write this configuration to the flash. We can then reload. And once it reloads, we should be able to come up and connect to this guy using whatever passwords we've set. So as you can see, the password recovery process is fairly simple, although you do have to know what you're doing. And that concludes our discussion of password recovery.